Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from the code called insert interval. It is a medium. We're going to jump right into it. You were given an array of non-overlapping intervals where intervals of i represented by start of i and end of i represent the start and end of the ith interval. And intervals is sorted in ascending order by start. You were also given an interval called new interval that represents the start and end of another interval. Insert new interval into intervals such that intervals is still sorted in ascending order by start. And intervals still does not have any overlapping intervals. Merge overlapping intervals if necessary. Return intervals after the insertion. Note that you don't need to modify intervals in place. You can make a new array and return it. Okay, so we are given an input intervals and a new interval that we want to insert and merging any intervals such that it's still sorted by start time in ascending order and has no overlapping intervals. Example one, we have the following input and we want to insert two, five. Here it does overlap with one, three. So we're just going to merge it into one big interval ranging from one to five. And then that's going to go in our output followed by six, nine. Example two, we have all of these intervals over here and we want to insert four, eight. Now four, eight does overlap with three, five with six, seven and eight, 10. So we're going to merge that into one big interval ranging from three to 10. So we're going to go from 1, 2 to 3, 10 to 12, 16. And that's what we're going to output. So this problem is actually pretty simple once we know exactly what we want to do. So like always, we're going to start off with an example and build up our logic. So let's take a look at example two over here. We have the intervals and the new interval that we want to insert. In fact, even before doing example two, let's just look at a much more generic example. So here, this is going to represent all of my intervals sorted by start time in ascending order, and there's no overlaps in my input. And say this is that new interval that I want to insert. Well, scanning through my input, right? If my end time ends for an interval before that new interval even starts, then of course there's gonna be no overlap, right? So we're just gonna take these intervals and append it to an output array as is, not changing anything. So once our start time is no longer after our end time, that means we are dealing with all of these intervals over here. Well, now let's look at our end time. If our new intervals end time ends before the intervals even start, well, again, there's going to be no overlap, right? It's the same thing we saw on this side. If I start after the intervals end, or if the new interval ends before all of these start, there's no overlap and these will just go into our output as is. But what happens when that's not the case? So here are the overlaps because at this point, my start is before the ends and my end is no longer before the start. So there's overlap. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the smallest start time and the greatest end time and just merge that into one big new interval. So now this is going to span from here all the way to this start. So I'm going to go from all these intervals to now this big interval and follow it up with the remaining ones. And that's all we want to do, right? Now let's try this with example two. We're going to iterate through comparing our end times first. So if my end time is before my start time, I'm just going to add it to my resulting output array. So let's call this result over here. If my end time is before my start time, there's no overlap and I just add that in as is. So one, two goes in here. So now what I do is I check is five less than my new intervals start time is the end less than start. It is not right. So now I want to check if the start is after my end. So is three greater than eight. It's not, which means we have an overlap. So now I want to take the smallest of these two intervals as my start. So it's going to be three and the biggest for the end. So that's going to stay eight. And now I make the same check over here again for all of these intervals following. I know I no longer need to check if they end before I start because that's no longer going to be true, right? It's all sorted. So now all I do is check for the end times. If my end time ends before the start, so is eight less than six. It is not, which means again, we want to merge these two in together. So six and seven, it falls between this range. We don't really need to change start or end. And again, I go to my next interval here. My start time is not after my end. So we again want to merge these 
together. So three is the smallest between my two starts and we make the same comparison for our end. So now we would span from three to 10 instead of three to eight. So now we cover all of these over here. And over here, I make the same check, right? Is my intervals end? So it's 10 less than the new start. It is, which means now I can just append this to my resulting array. So it's gonna go from three to 10. And for all the remaining intervals, I'm just going to append that as is to results. So 12 and 16. And that's all I have to do. So let's go ahead and code all of this up. Okay, to code all of this up, the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize my output array result. And my index is going to be zero length of intervals is length of intervals. And let's also explicitly define start and end times for our new interval. So that's going to be zero and new interval of one. So while our index is less than the length of our array intervals, and we want to cover the case for the non-overlaps in the beginning. So, and our start is greater than intervals of index of one. So the end, if our start is after all these ends, we're going to append the interval as is to our result. So append intervals of index and we increment index by one. And we get out of this while loop once that's no longer true. So now we want to check with our end. So while index is less than length of intervals and our end is greater than equal to the intervals start time. So index of zero. So now what are we checking, right? If our end is greater than equal to any of the starts, that means again, there's going to be overlap because if that wasn't the case, right? If our end is not greater than equal to a start, that means we're less than a start. And these are the ones that don't overlap. So right now we're dealing with the overlaps and all we want to do is update our start and end times. So start is going to be the minimum of start and intervals, intervals, intervals of index and zero. And our end time is going to be the max between end intervals and index of one. After this, we increment index plus equals one. Once we are out of this while loop, we can append to result our new interval with the start and end times updated. So start and end. And finally, while index is less than length of intervals, well, now we know there's gonna be no overlap whatsoever and we can just go ahead and append to result all of these intervals, intervals of index, incrementing index by one each time. At the end, all we have to do is return our result. Okay, now let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. So talking about space and time complexity, for time, we're looping through our entire input intervals. So that's gonna be O of N. And for space, it's also gonna be O of N because we are potentially storing every single interval in our output. Now, a lot of people also have asked you know, how do I think of this? How do I come up with a solution? I would recommend, you know, always starting off with drawings to really visualize it and get your thoughts in order. From there, run through examples to figure out edge cases. And the last thing would be to code it up. And if it's getting way too complex, right, take a step back and start over. Try to keep it as simple as possible, which is why for all of our questions, we always start off with examples, not only to understand how to solve that particular problem, but also just to understand how to think about it. And we're gonna go full circle right now by running through our code line by line to make sure we fully understand how it's going to work. Okay, say this was our input. We have the following intervals and this is the new one that we want to insert. So the first thing we're gonna do is initialize all of these variables. So results empty, index is zero, length of our intervals is four and start and end are one and five respectively. So now we're in this while loop, our index is zero. So it's over here right now. This is index and it is less than our length of intervals. We want to check is our start greater than the intervals end that we are on. That is not true. Start is not greater than it. So we are actually out of this while loop and in this one over here. Again, our index is less than the length. So now we want to check is our end greater than equal to our intervals start time is five greater than equal to zero. That is true. So now we're going to go update start and end. 
start is going to be the minimum of these values. So that's going to be zero and n is going to be the max. So it's going to stay five. So now we increment index by one. It's over here. And one is still less than four. We're good over here. Is our end greater than equal to our start? It is. So we again merge these together, updating start and end. So here, start and end are going to stay as they are. And we increment index by one again. Same check again. Our end is greater than equal to our intervals start. So we update start, which stays zero, and end, which now becomes 12. So we increment index one more time. We are back in this while loop. Our index is less than our length of our intervals. And we want to check, is end greater than equal to the interval start time? That is no longer true. So we are out of this while loop and we append our new interval into our result. So that's going to go from zero to 12. And now we are in this while loop over here. So while our index is less than the length, all we do is append it as is to our result. So that's going to be 13, 14. Now we increment this one more time and update this to be here. And over here, our index is no longer less than intervals. So we return our result, which is going to be our final output with this new interval merged in. So we just went ahead and solved insert interval. If you have any questions or comments, of course, let me know down below. If this was useful in any way, like and subscribe, it really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.